Welcome back to the Packet Lab. This is going to be the lab portion of configuring NTP on Cisco devices. And this is the topology we're going to be using today. Nothing very fancy here. Now, yeah, four routers are all connected to each other. Probably the item of most interest here is this cloud up here. That cloud's going to represent the internet. And what we're going to do is I'm going to actually be using GNS3. And what's going to happen is this connection right here. Well, I'll show you in just a minute. But what we're going to do is R1 is going to become a client of one or preferably more public NTP servers out on the internet. So it's going to get time from those servers and then in turn, it's going to be able to serve time up to these internal devices. Each device is going to have a loop back. It's going to be quad whatever the router is. So for R1, it's going to be quad ones. R4 is going to be quad fours. IP schema, I don't think we need to go into that. It's pretty self-evident. Initially, we're not going to be running a routing protocol here. Uh, we will turn up either EIGRP or OSPF, whichever I decide on later on in this lesson. And here we are in GNS3, and here's our setup. So it should look familiar from the topology. This here is a clouded. And what that cloud is, is it's a connection from my virtual router R1 to the Ethernet interface, my NIC card. Huh? NIC card is redundant because NIC is network interface card to my NIC on my PC here. So that's going to allow us access to the internet. So what's going to happen here is that R1 is going to grab an IP address from the DHCP server here, which I believe is a 2940 switch. But anyways, that's going to be dynamically learned. And then we did see the IP addressing for the rest of these. So this guy's going to have direct connectivity out to the internet. Okay, so here we are on R1. Uh, if I do a show IP in brief, you can see that we're all set up here. We are receiving a DHCP address you can see that here and it's going to be an inside address we got the 105 just to prove that i am connected to the internet i can ping google.com so it's going from this virtual router out my nick on this computer out to the internet now if you're following along at home you have something set up similar to this you're going to want to make sure that you do have ip domain lookup enabled here if you don't and you try to ping google.com it's going to look for dns server and it won't be able to resolve that name so our router's up we're connected to the internet let's go ahead and take a look and see what what the time is on this router right now. So if we do a show clock, we can see here that it thinks it's uh, March 1st, 2002. And what that is, is when a device boots up, it doesn't have a time source. It's going to select something called Epic Time, E-P-O-C-H. You might pronounce it Epoch. Anyways, it's going to generally pick either 2002 or 1993 if it's a Cisco device and just start from March 1st of that year. Basically, this must have been up for an hour and eight minutes, if I do a show version, include up time. You see, well, nine minutes now. So what that's doing is it's just incrementing from the time that it came up. It's just saying it's been an hour and eight minutes since I came to life and I have no idea what time it is. So I'm just going to assume that it's March 1st, 2002. This is not gonna be good for us if we're doing troubleshooting because we want to have accurate timestamps across our network. So let's go ahead and issue the show clock command, but we're going to add the detail keyword at the end here. And you can see here, it kind of hammers home what I just said. It's saying that there is no time source and you could tell this without even going into the detail command because if you had this asterisk that means that it basically doesn't know what time it is it's got no time source so it has no idea where it is in space and time let's go ahead and set this fool up with some good solid time via NTP. First though, we're going to have to go out and find some public NTP servers. And to do that, we'll go out to a web page on the internet. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and in the show notes, I'll have a direct link to the page we want to get to. But if you can't remember or you don't want to look it up, just go to ntp.org. You see, that's what I have in my browser up here. And that will get you to this page. Now they've moved a bunch of stuff around. What we're looking for here is this NTP public services project. So if you click on that, it will take you to where we want to be here. And that is the NTP public services project page. And then from there, what we're looking for is if we scroll down on the left here, we are looking for this time server. So if we click on that, it's going to take us to this page. And this is the page that will be in the show notes. And from here, it's going to give you a little information about this. But if we scroll down some more here, we'll see this bit that says finding a time server. And there's a list of time servers here. So the public NTP pools. And then you can also grab them right here, quick links to either Stratum 1 or Stratum 2 time servers. Now remember that Stratum 0 is a clock itself. So Stratum 1 time server is a time server that is connected directly to a Stratum 0 device, which is basically a radio clock, atomic clock, whatever's giving it that time. Stratum 2 is just one step removed from that. It's connected to a Stratum 1. Okay, so if you click on the Stratum 1, it gives you a list of the Stratum 1 servers. It's going to be broken down by ISO, and there's a key for that too, and you can sort by that. Like here, I'm assuming that CA is Canada, and the United States would be down here, and you can see US actually goes into states, so this is US Colorado. Here's the Stratum 2, same type of list here. But if you just go back here, if you just click on this NTP pool time servers link, 
link that'll get you this link and this is one that I generally go to because when I'm configuring this in the enterprise I'm not going to pick out individual servers I'm going to want to pool so what I will do is wherever that router is geophysically located if it's in Asia I'll use the Asia pool if it's in North America I'll use that pool so click on that and it'll tell you all these pools so you here you can just go ahead and grab one of these pools or all three of them if you like really with a pool it, what's going to happen the benefit here is that rather than having individual servers you're pointing to a pool so supposedly if one of those drop this pool is just going to serve you up another member which will be active so you can really get away with just dropping this zero dot north america pool so if you want to break it down even further now you want something a little bit closer you can grab a pool that is in your specific country you can, if you're in canada you want to grab the canadian pool if you're in the united states the u.s pool and it'll tell you right here how many members there are so you're pretty much good to go with this u.s pool dot ntp.org if you're in the united states there's 520 devices in there so if one breaks you've got more than enough backups if you're in the bahamas you've got a pool of one which really doesn't make sense to me but anywho i'm in the united states so i'm going to actually grab this pool and i'm going to pause right now and look up a couple individual servers as well and i'll join you back on the cli all right so i've picked a few ntp servers let's go ahead and make this a client of an ntp server so the command is pretty simple it's ntp can invoke the help with the question mark there's a lot of different options here the ones that we're going to be using today are going to be server and a little bit later on we'll be using masters when you're specifying server you're saying that you're going to configure ntp server now if you just read that and it's a little bit confusing because you're thinking that you're configuring yourself as an ntp server that's not the case you would use master for that and that's to act as an ntp master clock there is no client command here so as a client you just go ahead and specify a server or a group of servers that you want to use for NTP and in this case we're going to specify this US pool right here hit enter again you are gonna want to have IP domain lookup enabled otherwise if you don't you're gonna to want to go ahead and resolve this in some other manner with the NS lookup or whatever it takes here it's saying okay you put in a fully qualified domain name let me check with the domain server which is going to be the 254 address here now if I do a do show run include NTP it should show me that NTP server command, but you'll notice when we do this that rather than showing the fully qualified domain name of us.pool.ntp.org, it goes ahead and resolves that and just uses the IP address in the running configuration. That simplifies things for the router. It might be a little bit of a pain in the ass for you because if you're looking at your servers later on and you want to prefer one over another, you're going to have to know which one it is via the IP address. Unless, of course, you're using your prefer command when you're in your fully qualified domain name. We'll look at the prefer command in just a bit here so now we are fully configured that's all it takes it's very very simple to do let's see if this is working or not so we're gonna break out of configuration mode and let's go ahead and do a show clock and you could tell right now already that something's changed because prior we're using March 1st 2002 and it looks like it suddenly knows that it's November 18th which is the date today do a show clock Booyah. We are showing that this is November 18, 2010. Unfortunately, we're showing this in UTC time. Uh, right now, it's about 6.58 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm in Minneapolis. This doesn't mean a whole lot to me. Now, this is going to be design consideration with your network. I've seen it all kinds of ways. I see people that use UTC. They just say, okay, UTC is going to be the timestamp that we use across our network. I've seen people set up individual routers. Each router, depending on its uh, where it is located in the world, they'll use the local time zone. That's nice, except if you're trying to troubleshoot across various geographies, then you have to go ahead and convert the time into a standard time. So I would suggest either using UTC or picking a time zone and usually <laughs> with the politics of enterprises what happens and this is what happens in the case of the place that i work at you end up using the time zone of the city where your it headquarters are in this case minneapolis so uh, just keep that in mind that remember our little stupid song ntp uses udp port one two three version three provides it with UTC so you're going to get a UTC feed here and we're going to show you a little bit later on how to convert that UTC feed to a local time zone and to also put daylight saving time in there uh, but you do that on the local router itself so we also see here that our asterisk is gone which is good so now if we do a show clock detail cool it's telling us that our time source is NTP so not only do we have an accurate clock we know where we're getting it from so now some of the NTP verification commands there's really only two if you do a show NTP and then use the question mark for help there's associations and status associations can go a little bit further because it does have a detail but if you do associations and you hit enter this is really your 
primary verification command. So it's showing us the IP address of the, in this case, the pool that we pointed it to. And then it's showing us that this is a Stratum 3 server. So we're going out to this pool and it's giving us a public NTP server. That public NTP server happens to be Stratum 3. And what's interesting is here you could tell where this device is getting its time from. So that's um, whatever device has been chosen in the pool. That's where that device is getting its time from. That's a reference clock. And as we'll see a little bit later, we'll, we'll throw a couple Stratum 1s on here and I'll show you some interesting output. Again, this is a Stratum. Good to know. The rest of this is math that I really don't care about. This is how it makes sure that its time is accurate. Because remember, it's getting this from someplace on the internet. It could be Minneapolis. It could be Illinois. It could be Alaska. It's got to go ahead and take that packet and adjust for the delay, the transit time it took to get from wherever to here. So say this was in New York. It gives me a time, but then that packet has to travel from New York to Minneapolis. So NTP in the background uses a bunch of math to offset that and make this as accurate as it possibly can. There's a couple other interesting bits here. These are going to be good for troubleshooting. These symbols down here on the bottom, you're going to want to be familiar with these. So in this case, we see the asterisk. That means it's the master and it is synced. And then we should be able to see that this is configured as well. Generally, it'll be configured because that's what we do. It's not, I don't know that there's a dynamic NTP option, but if there was, you might not see this configured. Anywho, I'm speculating, but it's good to see this asterisk. And we'll add some more servers on here in a bit, and you'll see how this works when there's multiple servers. So anyways, we can go ahead and do a detail. And that gives us some more information here. And it gives us some really cool information. Again, shows us the server that we have configured. It shows that this is our master. And that comes into play more when you have multiple servers. I love this sane. So if it's not getting good time or there's something goofy with this server, it will tell you insane, which is one of my favorite command outputs in Cisco. Valid. Well, yeah, if it's sane, it should be valid. It tells us that this is a stratum three reference ID. You know, so all this information is generally going to be up here. If you want to get into the nitty gritty, there's all kinds of information here. Now, one thing I didn't show you earlier was the polling. When you start out, NTP will poll every 64 seconds. As it becomes, quote unquote, more comfortable with its NTP server, and it's pretty sure that that time is accurate, this will actually start to increase, and it will go up to actually 1,024, which is just over 17 minutes. So this is also good for troubleshooting. If you do this command and you see that it's polling every 64 seconds, either it just came up or it might not trust this as much as it should. Anyways, eventually it will slip down to a longer polling interval, which is really nice because you're not taking up too much bandwidth. I mean, you're sending packets out every 17 minutes. It's pretty efficient. So back to this detail command. This bit's actually pretty cool. It shows you that we're in client mode and that our peer is in server mode. You have to be careful with using the word peer when you're talking about NTP because it has a distinct meaning that we'll show in a different lesson. And again, the rest of this is just the protocol doing its thing. If you want to read into that, go right ahead, knock yourself out. And so then the other NTP command is show NTP status, and it will show you what our clock is. And the, and the interesting bit here is you see stratum four, and you think, well, wait a second, you told me up here it was a stratum three. This is what our clock is going to be. So if we were to serve out time to another device, it would see us as a stratum four, which makes sense because we're getting our time from a stratum three device. And the reference, that's gonna be the server that we are using to get time from. And then some more NTP specific numbers and math and stuff. So really the show NTP association is the one that you're going to use the most. So we have one NTP server set up and in this case we might be okay because this is actually a pool but let's go ahead and throw on some other devices. So I grabbed a few devices from that web page and these first ones are going to be stratum one servers. So again it's NTP server and then you can go ahead and drop in the fully qualified domain name with the caveat of uh, IP domain lookup. So this guy is actually in Illinois which is really close. I think that was the closest stratum one I could get. And then this guy is going to be in Belgium. Okay, so we've got these guys configured. I'm not going to jump out of configuration. We're going to stay there. Let's go ahead and do a do show NTP association. This is where it gets interesting. Since these are stratum one devices, these are the last two we put in here. You can see here's the IP address, nothing spectacular, but here's the reference clock. So it actually tells you the type of stratum zero device that you're getting your time from. I'm not sure what CDMA is, some type of radio. PPS is pulse per second. You can look these up on the internet. They're fairly interesting, but this 
is your actual reference clock whereas you can see here because this was a stratum 3 server it's getting us from another server so it's going to show the ip address of that now remember this was our master now it's not what's happening is it's chosen this one and here's the downside with this i'm not sure if this is the one that's in belgium or in illinois i'm going to guess it's the one in illinois because that's the one i put in first because the tiebreaker is basically i'm going to pick ntp server that has the lowest stratum so i'm going to pick a stratum 1 over a stratum 3 and then between these two because they're both stratum 1 i'm going to prefer the one that i heard communications from first